stampers. My name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And this is a follow-up video. Um, I did a recent tips and tricks video where I talked about getting the most out of your designer series paper. And I was working with the new uh, Magnolia Suite out of the new Stampin' Up! catalog. And um, I had cut some strips of paper. There were two tips videos, one about how to get the most out of cutting your paper, and the second one was more about how to use it by bringing in all of the colors that match it to create. And then in that video, I finished up by making this little card. And it has the negative piece that I cut away from here on the inside as decoration. And so that is a card that I've already shown on that video. Well, I didn't want to waste those little strips of paper. And so this is uh, four more cards that I've come up with using those strips of paper and that same notion of how to put together some cards using the material that you have. So this video has a few more things in it, some different embellishments, some more use of the uh, the the ribbon pack that comes with the magnolia. On this one I used a few dies. I cut out some flowers here. I used these gems that are in the petal pink. I did some sponging, did some stamping, put a few extra things on here. And so what I thought I would do with this video is just show you using those two inch strips that we cut what I did with the rest of, or at least some of those strips that were left over. Again, this is the one we made in that previous video, so I'm going to set that one aside. And I'm going to set these aside and show you exactly what I did to make them. Some of them are a little bit uh, more complicated, and some of them are a little less complicated. And let's just start with this one. So this one, I used the layered leaves embossing folder on a piece of um, mossy meadow. So let me pull out all of my pieces that I have on the inside here. So this is the card I made, and it just says thanks across here, and inside has a little bit of decoration, and because this is so light, I didn't put another layer on the inside. So what you need to make that card is you need a piece of mossy metal that is four by five and a quarter. And then you need one of our strips, and I picked a different strip this time um, out of the cat out of that paper that has basically the same colors on it. And this is the two inch by four inch strip that we cut from that designer series paper. And then I cut another piece that is two and a half by four and a half as a layering piece here. And then I have a piece that is three quarters of an inch by about three inches to put our sentiment on. And so let's just get started. Now, I've already done a few things ahead of time since I'm making four cards. We're going to have to kind of boogie along here. <laughs> I've already run this piece through my embossing folder to um, get that done. And I have my uh, outside piece here that is my card base out of So Saffron. And so I'm going to um, put that together. And on these pieces, it's just assembling all of this so we can put the ribbon and the twine around it. So this piece is just going to be added with some snail on this piece and centered. There we go. And then that piece is going to have some dimensionals on it. I've been trying to make this video for days now and I keep getting interrupted. <laughs> and so I determined that I was going to get it done today one way or the other. And what I'm doing is putting uh, putting seven dimensionals on this, or eight. Uh, because this is a long piece and I don't want it to sag, 
I'm putting three down on either side and then two in the middle. So this piece is going to get centered on here. All right, so I have a little piece of these two pieces of um, ribbon and twine that come in the Magnolia Lane Ribbon Combo Pack. And so on this piece I have here, I'm going to add a little bit of snail on the back of the ribbon so it'll stay put and put that into place around the bottom of my card here and secure that on the back side of the uh, card front here and then I have some of this twine I'm going to also Let's see, I'm going to put a little bit more snail down on the back here to hold those pieces in place. And I'm going to put some snail here on the side so I can anchor my twine. And I'm going to go around this little band of ribbon a couple of times here and secure that to the back. And then I've already cut another couple of pieces of twine. This is about oh eight and a half, nine inches, something like that. And there are some bow tying tips and tricks videos out there um, that show you about doing um, simple bows and all of that. And so here is our little bow. And I'm going to attach that with a glue dot. And I'm going to fold a glue dot here in half and put that little roll of a glue dot on the back of my ribbon and put that into place here and trim up my tails. There we go. All right. Now then, I have this little strip of card here in the Sew Saffron, and I have my stamp here mounted, and this is out of the Magnolia, Good Morning Magnolia set, and there it is, thanks. And I think on this one, let's see, on one of these others, I used the thinking of you as well. So um, that's what I'm doing on that. And I'm using my um, green ink here, my Mossy Meadow ink. I'm going to ink up my thanks and set that right in the center on this little strip of paper. Hopefully that's straight, and it is. And what I did was I just cut a little angle, and you can cut any angle you like, and then use that little piece of paper on the other side here to get that same angle. And what I want to do is come out a little ways here. And so I'm going to use this piece of paper to just cut along that same line and get that same angle. And so there we have one that is perfectly ready to go. And because this is up on dimensionals, this little panel, I didn't put this sentiment on dimensionals. I just used some snail here and put that into place. So there is my thanks. Now I can use, in fact, I think I'm going to use my liquid glue on the back of this piece only because it's been embossed and has lots of uneven surfaces. So I'm going to put that 
on here and just that quickly we have our card front done now and just that fast we have a pretty little card using one of those two inch strips now i'm going to add some snail to the back of this piece and set it into place right along this edge with a tiny little border and then i'm going to add a little bit of snail to this little strip here and put that into place right down the center of this strip here and i think i cut that one a little bit shorter i did so I'm going to need to put that in place like that. And there we go. There is our second card. Now on this, I did add a few of these um, rhinestones. And what I did was I sort of cascaded them down the card this way. stones kind of go across my card in kind of a diagonal and there we go I've got that first card finished all right let's move on to the next card this is one that I have lots of pieces for and so this is a card that uses two of those two inch strips and a piece of mossy meadow. It's on a black card base. Okay, so here's my black card base. I'll leave that one up here so we can see what we're doing. And this piece goes straight down and is adhered to the card base. And so I want you to notice here, as much as anything, how full this card base looks using just two two inch strips of paper out of the designer series paper so here is my first piece of designer series paper and that is also just going to get adhered to the front of the card so i'm going to tuck this way up here in the corner and give it a little border. Then I've got my piece of mossy meadow that's going to span the entire front of the card base here. And we're going to set that so that it is just right here. And it goes from the top of that piece of pink all the way down to the bottom of the piece of pink. All right, now our next piece, this one, is going to go here, and it's more the focal point. So I'm going to put this one up on dimensionals. Oh, and I can see I've already made a mistake. And I am putting lots of dimensionals on this because this is designer series paper and um, not as strong as cardstock. And that is, I forgot to put down my ribbon. So we'll do that and see if we can get that piece up a little bit. So I'm going to pick up this piece here. Let's see if I can do that successfully. Looks like I'm going to get away with it. And I have a piece of this ribbon that I have colored that I'm going to put across here on my piece of paper. And I colored this with my Petal Pink Dark Blend. So I'm going to set that, let me just see where I put that on this card, right about here it looks like. So I'll put that into place and secure that around the back side of the card. 
when you do yours you be sure and by the way these designs will work with any designer series paper so you could use this same sort of way of doing it and put using some uh, designer series paper out of your own stash this is just a layout if you will um, that'll help you help you get your your own cards done but this was just such a pretty little card I'm very pleased with the way this came out so I'm getting my release papers off the back here that are very reluctant, I might add. <laughs> and I'm going to put this lovely piece of paper right down here in this corner. Laying that into place. There we go. Then I took another little piece of that same ribbon and I tied a little fobo here and I'm going to use my glue dots once again to put that little bow in place. I'm going to put a glue dot on the back of that knot and set it up to go right on top of that piece of ribbon. There we go. Now then the other thing that I did was I fussy cut out this little flower here and we're going to put it up on dimensionals. So I'm going to use two pretty good sized dimensionals and then I'm going to use a few of the mini dimensionals here to put in a couple of places that will help secure this flower in place. And I think putting that right up here looks good. And I actually cut out an extra leaf here because I couldn't quite get the piece that I needed from the designer series paper. So I cut an additional little leaf because I thought it looked better balanced with three leaves instead of two. And I'm just going to tuck this one right under here and I think that makes a little bit better balance. Okay, now for this one I also used a piece of scrap of the petal pink here on the back and this petal, what I did was I used the smallest little square of my stitched rectangle squares and I cut out a piece and I went ahead and did that ahead of time again trying to save a little time making four cards. This one says thinking of you and then I cut it out of this paper. Now what we're going to do is add a couple of dimensionals to this. So that thinking of you is going to go right across here spanning the green and the striped paper right there. And then once again, I used a few of the rhinestones here to go on this side of the card. I started with one on the sentiment and then I put a couple uh, here and a couple across the bottom of this card, wherever it makes sense for you to think about putting uh, a few rhinestones. And you'll have a good feel for that on your own card, depending on where the patterns are. Um, so I'm just gonna spread a few around on this card. Maybe just one more on this one right down here. And there we go. So now on the inside of this card, what I did was I took a piece of the petal pink that was four by five and a quarter, and then I cut a piece that is three and a quarter by five to layer on the front of this piece, which I'm going to do here very quickly and 
get this piece here, put this piece in place on the inside of my card here. There we go. And then I cut a strip about three quarters of an inch to go all the way down the side of this piece on the inside. So I'm going to put a little bit of snail on this piece and set that in place all the way from the top of the pink to the bottom. And there we go. There is our next card complete. And again, I'm still only using those little two inch strips that I taught you how to cut in the other video. This one is a very simple little card. This one requires a white base and a little of the powder pink ink not powder pink, petal pink, <laughs> petal pink ink right along the edge here. And so I have some scratch paper here and I'm going to open up this card base here and I have a new toy. I bought some blending brushes, but this can be done with sponge or a dopper or whatever you have that you do your color transfer to, but I bought some brushes, it's called Start Makers, I bought it at a craft show, and um, I've just really been enjoying using them. It just lays down the color awfully softly, and I just want to get a handful of color just down this edge on here, and it really makes for easy application. Oh, Stampin' Up! Can we have some some blending brushes? <laughs> Maybe we'll get some later. So I put some color down here on the edge of this card and the thing that's nice about these brushes is that you just rub the color right out of it on this or on a little baby wipe and it's ready to go again and you can use another color. So what I did here is from the stamp set I used this image here and I just stamped with some memento ink and then I think I also did the same on the inside, so I may have to lay down a little bit more color I did. So um, I'm going to add my flowers here, and I'm going to start with one on the top. I learned a little bit as I did this. If I'm just going to use the black images, then I think I need to make sure I have plenty of ink, number one. And then I need to think in terms of balancing these by maybe having one going one way, another going the other way, and so I end up with four images down the side here. Now I'm going to do that same thing. I thought I was done with that ink, but apparently I'm not because I need to do that same thing to the inside of this card. Here, and these are the other pieces that I have. Now, this is one of the two inch strips that I cut. So I cut a black one two inch, this is two by four, so I cut this one two and a quarter by four and a quarter so that I could have a nice little rim around this piece of paper. 
and then this one I cut at two and a half inches by, let's see, was it five? I think it was five. Yes, by five, so that this black piece is cut at two and three quarters by five and a quarter. Oops, straight would be good. See if I can coax that off and get it on here straight. There we go, that's a little bit more like it, I can tell. All right, and then what I did was I laid this piece down here on this side, again, with just snails. See how much this fills up the card? It's pretty amazing, actually. So I'm putting this one down here, right there. And then I put this one up on dimensionals. And put this in place just so that it comes out here, is centered from top to bottom, and creates a little interest. Now on this one, I used these petal pink gems that are in the catalog and are carrying over. And on this one, I used a couple of different shapes. And this little odd one is here because I made a boo-boo in my stamping. <laughs> but I thought I might just try to use all the same shape on this one. And since I have the most of these long rectangles, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put, you know, um, these here. I'm going to put maybe one here, almost like a uh, diamond shape, one out here, and then one down here on the card. And so it looks a little funny. I'm going to put one more, um, maybe right in here. Okay, so there we go. That one is a note card and has no other sentiment, but is nicely decorated both on the inside and the outside. So there's our third card. I have one more to go. This one is a little more fiddly, <laughs> so it has lots of pieces to it. Um, but this is done on a black card base. Here's my black card base. And then I've taken another one of these beautiful black strips. And what I did was I cut this strip in half. So each of these is an inch. And then I have that goes on the back of this piece here to make this piece. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is adhere these three pieces together and um, I think what I have done and what I'm going to do here is just put a little strip of snail kind of along the edge at the top and the bottom and then I turn this over and I put this on here so that I would say that looks to be like oh three quarters of an inch sticking off the top and then three quarters of an inch off the bottom. And so now I've got a nice big piece that's going to go across my work. All right, then the next thing I did, and um, uh, you need two pieces, a piece of petal pink here, and I made this one four by five inches, and this one I made four by about two and a half inches. And there is, these are the dies to the Magnolia Suite. And at the bottom of these, very quietly hitting, hiding there, is this little border die. And what I did was, I went down the page here 
and put this little border die. I cut this piece at five inches and I put this little border die down here at the bottom of the page here at about, I think it was four and three quarters of an inch. Yes, four and three quarters of an inch and then just cut this bottom off. And then on my green piece, what I did was I just lined it up on the bottom of the card and cut that piece out. So what I ended up with then are is this piece and this piece so that I could create the underside of this. So what I did to get all of that done is I took this piece and put it on the top of here. And you can see now there's just a little piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into place on the top of my piece of card. And that will make this um, piece of designer series paper on here a little bit more sturdy as well. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and place that all the way to the top of that pink piece and set it down the card here. So now I've got this nice piece of very uh, pretty designer paper. This almost looks like chintz, which is a kind of paper that's got lots and lots of little designs on it. I think it came out very pretty. Then I can place this piece in place underneath like this and leave from here to here. It seemed to work if that was about an inch. And that way you're not right along the bottom and you still have plenty of place to put your little sentiment on here. So I'm going to go ahead and place some snail on here to start with just on the bottom. And let's get this piece put into place so we know exactly where we want it. And I think something like that is just about right. And then it's a matter of getting it on here straight. And then I can place this whole piece on my black. And isn't that a beautiful card front? And I just used two of those strips of designer series paper for the outside. For the inside, I did another thing that we'll talk about here in just a minute. But let's get this piece put on our card. So here we have, and normally I would do my stamping first, and it might be a good idea to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and place this on my card front here. Make sure I'm doing it right side up. And get this piece put into place. Look at all those layers, and doesn't that look just rich? Very pretty. Then I took from the Butterfly Gala, uh, let's see, let me find that stamp. Here it is, a little note, and I used my black ink here, my Memento, and I got that nice and inked up, and then put my little note right here on the bottom. And that card front is just about done. Now, I did cut out, fussy cut, two little flowers uh, for this card out of my DSP. There are some that are very large flowers and some that are smaller. And on this card here, I used one of the smaller ones. And on this card, I wanted one of the larger ones. And then I had a piece of the other black paper, and that is this paper. And I cut out one of these smaller pieces of the uh, magnolia. And what I did was I glued this piece to this one. 
and then put some dimensionals on the back and put that cluster right down here in the corner and I think it just came out so beautiful. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run a little bit of tape along the edge here and I'm going to place this bud right here or maybe I needed to do that the other way. <laughs> Got my my glue on the wrong side here. Put my little bud right here take care of that glue there right on the edge of this flower and then get some dimensionals put uh, right across that little seam and a couple places around the back of this flower. Okay, there we have our flower on the front and then on the inside I took four inch strip and I cut these two pieces into one and a quarter inch strips and then I took a piece of petal pink that was uh, four and a quarter or four by five and a quarter and I used my die and I put it so that I could capture most of the top of the card here and then set it at the bottom to cut off the other piece here. Looks like I didn't quite get it to go all the way around here. There we go. And um, put that into place so that on the inside of my card what I could do is make this look like it's completely backed by this paper and put a whole piece on the inside. So I think what I'm going to do with this is I am going to put this piece of paper down at the top here with a border and it looks like that could come over towards the middle a little bit more. Not always to see, always able to see as much on the black, but there we go. All right, now I can fit this piece into place here and this piece into place here, and it looks like I'm going to have plenty of room. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this piece down on the bottom and try to get the margins the same as I did on the top. So placing this so that that edge is right along the edge where the other piece is and then across the bottom to put that into place and then this piece can go into place as the decoration in a place to put your sentiment on the inside. Now this one has a few more little parts and pieces to it, but it's still using absolutely minimum amounts of your designer series paper. And isn't that a pretty and interesting little card? Now on this one, what I did was I put some of these larger pearls on the front of this card just to do something a little bit different. And I'm seeing here, um, and actually on this one, putting three along the bottom here, looks like it makes some sense. And then maybe putting just a few more on here um, adds to the card. So there it is. There is my fourth card. So using now more of those two inch strips of paper and a little bit of coordinating cardstock for the bases and for the some of the decorations on the card itself, here are four more. And then let me bring back the one 
that I did on the video as yet another example. And so there we have four cards using the two inch strips of paper. And it doesn't look, I don't think, like I was trying to be chintzy with my paper. <laughs> In fact, I think these designs are beautiful. I think they came out just the way you'd like them. Now, this suite and this paper will be available for order on my website, www.albedinger.stampinup.net or through my blog, www.inkandingenuity.com on June the 4th. So we have just a, just right at a month. Um, and I believe that now uh, might be, or maybe it's the 15th, uh, pretty soon, the um, copies of, the PDF copies of the catalog will be available online. And once that happens, then uh, you can see all of the beautiful papers and uh, all of the beautiful designs that are in that. Um, thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. Um, the prize for May is a complete set of Stampin' Up! blocks from the smallest little block all the way to the largest of the blocks. Grab one here. And there are a series of all of the blocks in between. It's a $75 value in the catalog. And so that is my prize draw for the month of May. And all it takes is putting an order on my website and you automatically qualify to be in the drawing. I hope you enjoyed this today. I have so loved working with these minimal supplies and yet I think getting a pretty rich looking set of cards out of it without overusing and I can't begin to tell you I haven't even used one page of each paper yet um, so you can get a ton of stuff and if you got the card pack on this one it would go even further so <laughs> that's it for me today I'll be back soon with more cards more projects and more tips bye